The garden has been doing great, and I think this might be my biggest harvest of the whole year. So if you've been hanging out on my channel this summer, then you know that I've been giving you monthly garden updates, and that was the plan for this month too, but as I was out in the garden this morning picking stuff, I was looking at everything and I was thinking, you know, stuff hasn't really changed that much. There are a couple things that are producing that weren't before, but it's not that different. Mostly it's just more of the same stuff still growing and putting out fruit and doing all that kind of stuff. So instead of showing you stuff you've pretty much already seen, I thought today I could show you the whole of all the veggies that I harvested this morning because there's a lot of stuff. I do think this might be our biggest one yet. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, so we're going to go through it all and break it down and I can give you a little updates on how how everything's doing. So here's the overview of everything. As you can see, we got a lot of stuff going on in here. And then this whole bowl right here is just tomatoes, mostly cherry tomatoes. So I thought we could start with this one. I can dump it out and show you all the different types that we have in here. Look at all of these tomatoes. It is insane. Okay, let's go through these. So these are the white cherries. Very good. Also, if you want an overview of the cherry tomatoes I'm growing, I do have a video on that, so I'll link it. Um, but these are the black cherries. These, as you can see, are producing the best of all the tomatoes we have. We have four plants that are just crazy. Vines everywhere. It's insane. And these are my favorite, so I don't mind that one bit. These are the Tommy Toes, and then we have some green grape. These don't taste that great, but I do think they look really pretty. And then these are Jean Fulmets, which are like a medium tomato. I roast these a lot um, and freeze them to put on pizzas in the winter. We have one Niagas here. They've been kind of, I don't know, chugging along, not really producing a lot, but we're getting a few here and there. And then this is, I think, a Kellogg's Breakfast. It's an orange tomato. We haven't been getting a ton of these either, but you know, this one looks pretty good. And believe it or not with the cherry tomatoes, me and my husband together will probably end up eating almost all these because we just eat them like candy. They're like one of our favorite things. So now that it's getting later in the season, we're not as enthusiastic as we were at the beginning of summer when we hadn't had a tomato in months. Um, so I might try to hold some of these black cherries back, especially since we have so many, to make some salsa or something to freeze um, for the winter too, because we do like salsa. So if we can make some from the garden, that would be great. Over all our cherry tomatoes have been crushing it. We've been getting so many and it's been awesome. The large tomatoes just haven't been producing that well. Um, I don't know why either. I think some of the large tomatoes we have interplanted with beans and I don't know if there's just too much competition going on between them that the beans are kind of taking over. But I don't know because the Jean Flamets are with beans and they're doing great. So I don't know if it's just certain spots in the garden are better than others and it so happened that the large tomatoes got put in those spots. We've gotten a few here and there and they've been great, but just nothing compared to all the cherry tomatoes we've been getting. Next up, I thought we could move on to peppers and we have a few different types of peppers coming out of the garden, mostly hot peppers. So let's start with the obvious one. This right here in the middle is called an ahi crystal. I've never grown these before. Um, they can start to turn orange and go all the way to red but what I read online was that the flavor was best when they were this shade this kind of greeny yellow color so pick these they're supposed to have kind of like a grapefruit flavor mixed in there with the heat and spiciness so I don't know what's that, what that is like but people said that they could be good for drying good for pickling good for just putting in recipes so I'm really excited to try these then over here we have the Santa Fe Grandes I've grown these before and we've been getting these out of the garden um, there's a lot more on the plants that are just getting ready to turn um, and these are kind of a medium hot pepper a little bit spicier than a jalapeno but not crazy and then these over here this other red one this is another new one for me it's called a Martin's carrot and this is all supposed to be kind of like a medium spicy pepper um, I'm not sure how it compares to these guys in terms of flavor but as you can see it's a little more pointy than these are um, and yeah these are the only two we've gotten off of those those plants did not do well at all um, for whatever reason but we've got a couple here that we can try and then we have a couple sweet peppers here lots more green ones out there which I might just go ahead and pick soon um, so that the plant can kind of put out as much as it can here at the end of the season rather than focusing on turning uh, peppers red but these are just nice to have these ones are actually called a bullnose bell and I like them because they were grown by Thomas Jefferson at Monticello which being in Virginia is you know pretty close to us and it's cool to know that something grown here a long time ago by one of our founding fathers is growing in my garden too. Moving on to cucumbers, we don't have a ton, but we do have a decent amount. So I only have one variety of large cucumber in the garden and these are the parade cucumbers. We had a 
quite a few plants of these, but they just didn't produce as well as they had in the past. So we've been getting enough, like similar harvest to this, where we can eat them. I haven't had to buy any, but not enough to really pickle a bunch, which is a little sad because I love pickles, but it's not the biggest deal. And then over here, these are the Mexican sour gherkins, and we'll get close. They look like little baby watermelons, super cute. I've talked about them before, but they kind of have like an acidic sour taste to them, which is fun. So I grew these more just for the novelty. I haven't really been even harvesting them a lot of times, more just snacking on them in the garden here and there, but they're pretty fun. And uh, you know, they're kind of like a nice, a nice novelty thing to have. Moving on, let's talk about tomatillos. Okay, so here are our green and purple tomatillos. So like this one right here is a purple one. This one right here is a purple one. And then these over here are the green ones. Um, these are actually the first purples we've gotten. They've been lagging a little bit behind the green ones, but we've gotten enough green ones so far that I've been able to make some salsa, which is super yummy. And that's pretty much the only way I use these is I just make lots of yummy salsa and then we either have it right then or I freeze it for later. So these are awesome and they're still producing. Um, so we have more tomatillos in our future. And then over here, these are related to tomatillos and they are called a ground cherry. And these are really fun because they are sweet. So you can see they have the husk just like the tomatillo. Let's see if I can do this one handed. There we go. They're these little yellow fruits. Um, and so they're really cool because they kind of taste like a tomato and a pineapple mixed together. And I really like them. I think they're pretty good. Um, they're definitely something you've never had before as far as flavor goes. So the first time you might be kind of like, what is this? I don't know if I like it, but I think they're awesome now that we've had a lot and I've been eating them. I have heard people say that your red people say, I guess online, that you can make pies out of them. But I haven't had quite enough that I could do that. And honestly, I just snack on them whole. And I think these are really fun because... A lot of fruits are perennials, so either like sh fruit bushes or fruit trees. So it's something that you have to have a little bit more time investment in and also be in that place for a while wherever you're living to have the time to plant something cultivated and actually get fruit from it. So there aren't a lot of fruits that you can grow that are annual. So it's nice to have something sweet that's pretty easy um, in addition to the melons and stuff that we're growing that take a little bit more effort and time to actually get something out of them. Speaking of melons, I did pick one today and it was this little guy. Um, this is the Petite Gris de Ren and we've got gotten a few of these, but I think they're almost done. There's like maybe one or two out there on the vine. I'm not even sure if they're going to have enough time to get fully ripe. These have been pretty good. Um, this one, unfortunately, is split on the bottom, so I'm going to have to cut it up and see if the top half is good or not, um, but I've enjoyed these. And then as far as the other melons we have, those get a little bigger. I have one here. I didn't pick it today, so it's not officially part of this harvest, but I thought I'd show it to you anyways. You, as you can see, it's a little bit bigger, um, and I haven't tried any of these yet. This is the first one I've picked. There are a couple more out there that are getting close to ripe. These are the Boule d'Or melons, um, and they're supposed to be green inside, but I just don't even have any idea how they're doing because I haven't gotten around to cutting this guy up yet. And then, there's this. This is blowing my mind right now. Okay, let's start with the smaller pile. These are the rattlesnake beans. These have been good. They're green with like these purple flashes across them. Some of them hardly have any purple at all, like this one, um, but overall, these have been really good. Moving on to these, these are the purple potted pole beans. Now, we have about twice as many of these plants planted, but as you can see, we're getting much more than twice as many as we're getting off of these. For whatever reason, these guys are just going crazy. Um, and there's a lot out there that were even too far gone for me to pick, so I'm just leaving them on for seeds. But look at these. I mean, this is nuts. And I have a whole bag of these from, like, I don't know, last week in the fridge that I haven't even cooked yet. So... I'm thinking these guys are gonna end up in the freezer. And to freeze them, what I'll probably end up doing is cutting them up into smaller pieces and then blanching them. That's what I actually did with a batch of these beans, of both types of beans, actually, um, before we went on a trip at the beginning of August because we picked a bunch and we obviously couldn't use them before we left, so I wanted to get them processed and frozen. Uh, and with those, what I'm probably gonna use them for, I'm thinking, is in soups in the winter so that when I make a big pot of soup, I can just pull one of those bags up and dump it in there. Um, and it will be something to add a little extra green, something from the garden into our winter meals, and just another veggie to have in the mix. And here's a nice overview of everything all laid out on the table. I have to say that I think this is a pretty awesome harvest to have 
all in one day. And let me know in the comments how your plants are doing, what you're growing, what you're getting out of it, what kind of meals you're making. I love to hear all that kind of stuff. I hope you'd like seeing this little harvest from my garden. And if you are new here and you want healthy eating tips and nutrition info, healthy recipes, as well as my gardening adventures, then make sure that you subscribe because eating healthy and living a healthy lifestyle really doesn't have to be complicated and I wanna show you how to do it. Thanks for watching, I hope you're having a great day and I'll talk to you next time.